Hi, this is the series of videos for pupils studying OCR 21st century science. This is P5, the unit on electricity, and we're looking at lesson four, which is the relationship between voltage, current and resistance are three things that we need to understand in a circuit. We're going to look at Ohm's law to, to enshrine that relationship. So, we've learned so far that current affects voltage, sorry, voltage affects current and resistance affects current. And if we're going to investigate this properly, we would use a, uh, a circuit that looks a bit like this, with an ammeter in series, and we're just going to use a fixed resistor, which is represented by the block, and we're going to measure the voltage across the resistance. Uh, and we'll use, we'll use a big battery. So, if I change the voltage by adding or taking away batteries, and I measure the current and I measure the voltage across a component in the circuit, I end up with a set of results that looks like this. Now I realise I'm putting voltage on the y-axis when it's the independent variable, but there is a reason for that. So, if the voltage is zero, then no current will flow. So I end up with my first result there. But as I increase the voltage, as we said, with voltage defined as the push on the current, then I end up with a straight line graph that goes to zero, zero. And so voltage is proportional to current. Now the reason I've drawn it with voltage on the y-axis is because Let's say I redo the experiment and I change the resistor. So let's imagine I change that for a diff different resistor and I do the experiment again. And what I get this time is I get a set of results again, zero to start with. So I have two graph lines here. Both of them are straight line graphs, despite my dodgy drawing. Um, but they're different gradients. Now the gradient depends upon the resistance. And this is how resistance was first defined, in as much as this one here clearly has got a bigger resistance and this one's got a smaller resistance. Because for this one, as I increase the voltage, the current doesn't go up by very much. And this one, as I increase the voltage, the current goes up by much bigger amounts. So this one seems to have a bigger resistance than this one. And if I had an even bigger resistance, then I might get a graph line that goes like that. So there is a relationship here between the gradient of the graph line and the size of the resistance. In actual fact, resistance is defined as the gradient of the graph. Now, gradient equals um, rise over tread or y over x. So I end up with this relationship here where resistance is actually defined as the ratio of voltage to current. So basically what that means is that if I've got a big resistance then I, and I plot the results, I get a steep graph like that, which means that even though I'm increasing the push on my electrons, I don't seem to be getting much of a current flow. Not many electrons are moving. Whereas with a low resistance, I am applying an increase in voltage and I get a much bigger increase in the amount of current. Now, this leads to the relationship which I've enshrined here. This is given to you in the exam. It's one of the few things I can ask you about in terms of calculations for this unit. So try and become familiar with that idea. Um, resistance... Uh, is equal to the voltage divided by the current. Now, this only works at a constant temperature. So this is our proviso. We'll only get a straight line graph if the resistance itself stays at a constant temperature. And that can be quite difficult to do um, because as electrons pass through, they tend to warm things up. 
So Ohm's law states that the ratio between voltage and current is constant so long as the temperature remains constant. And those conductors which follow Ohm's law, which give us a straight line graph, are called ohmic conductors. So you'll be asked to do calculations involving RV and I, no doubt, in the higher paper for um, P5. Um, and it really is a case of, as always, they'll give you two things and ask you to find the third. On the higher paper, they're more likely to ask you to rearrange this equation. That's a separate issue. Um, but just remember the idea that if you're confused, look for the numbers they give you and try and work out which formula to use. But this is, this is something that will always come up as a calculation. And we'll look at practice calculations later. Anyway, remember, as you increase the voltage, you increase the current. But as you increase the resistance, then you decrease the current. So you have this relationship between the three key parts of a circuit, which is voltage increases current, but resistance decreases current. The bigger the resistance I have, the smaller the currents I get. 